Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for another live video on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. If uh, you guys were lucky enough to tune in yesterday, you saw a TIG welding video with Matt. Uh, if you'd like to see it, it's, it's uh, loaded on, it was recorded and loaded on our YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and search Eastwood TIG welder, I'm sure you'll find a lot of good tips there, especially on, a, it was specifically on TIG rider filler tech. So, uh, fill our rod tech. So you probably want to check that out. And that's another good reason to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have about 1,500 videos. We post them all the time and it's a good place to watch these live videos recorded. But today we're going to talk about blast cabinets because we're just introducing our modular blast cabinet, which we're going to take a look at, as well as our other ones uh, that we have right here. So let's take a look. Oh, I sh shouldn't forget everybody's favorite lead tech over here. Scott, if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. He's a uh, Really knowledgeable on uh, blast cabinets, pressure blasters, and all your soda and abrasive media. So if you have a question or, uh, during this uh, broadcast, make sure you post it in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook, and he'll answer it for you. So now that we didn't, didn't mean to forget about you, Scott. So now that we've got that. Let's check uh, out the basics of some of these blast, blast cabinets. Small benchtop version right here. It's about three cubic feet in size. The modular one is around six. And the big one right here is, a, is about 11 cubic feet. This one will hold a 20 inch wheel. This one is really good. Um, if, if you have the space and you're restoring a car, this is gonna hold just about everything you need. Uh, you've probably, some of you have probably seen the videos we have on it. You can see how big of parts um, that, that can actually fit into it. Now, back to this modular one. So like I said, we just came out with this one. It's a, it's a nice size cabinet. And one cool feature of this is that you can actually get legs. We sell them separately. So uh, I believe we actually have footage of it so we can show you, we shot yesterday. So you can actually see that, you know, you can assemble the legs and then that's gonna allow you to just, if you have the space in your garage, you can just put it up against the wall. So that's a really nice feature of this is that you can use it bench top or as a standalone version. And speaking of that, like this one here, this one's light enough. This one has media in it, but you can just lift it up and you can put it down below. So that's another nice thing of that. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So. Oh, that's something else we should talk about. Well, well, we'll get to that. Anyways, let's, uh, let's, I guess, go over some of the other features of this. Is that what we should do now? So, went over the modular one. Let's go over just some of the basic features. This bench top version and the big version, they have a latch and they've got a light. Oh, we can get in here. So, it's, it's got a pretty nice light, so you can really see when you're in there blasting. But, we'll get to the, the modular one. Not only, we can show you how bright that one is really bright. So, as you can see, it's got a really bright LED light and it has these gas struts, which will, which will hold the lid open as opposed to the other ones that just have latches. Guess, do we got a good shot of that, Joe? So you can see how bright that is. So this one, you can really, you, you can really see when you're in there on, a, on this one. And as you can see, these are all top loading with, a, with these replaceable liners. We have these liners, so when these get all uh, marked up, you just peel them off, and then we actually give some of these to you, and then you just put another liner on, and you're back to being able to see really well. That's a really nice feature. So let me shut this light off. And another thing about this being top loaded that makes it really nice is the fact that if it was, it, it doesn't take up much space. A lot of them, you know, they'll have a door on the side, which means you can never put it up against a wall. Then the other thing is, even if you have it out in the open, you still need all of this space right here to be able to put the part in. So you still can't put anything next to it, even if you, even if you have some space. So the top loading one's an advantage. And if you guys, you guys maybe don't realize how big this cabinet is, but we got this header right here. So as you can see, the header fits right in this cabinet without any problems at all. So, you know, it's a top loading unit, saves you space, and it's also big enough to hold a big part like this header. All right, let's set this down here. See what else we're going to talk about here. So, oh, might as well talk about the guns while I have this open. They all come with a, a high quality gun. All three have the same gun. It's really important um, to, get a, to get a cabinet that has a high flow, high quality gun and, and uh, with, with good nozzles, because it's really gonna help you remove the paint and rust. Uh, really nice gloves, and here's a little tip. Uh, they come with non-duning non hoppers, which is really gonna help you keep blasting, but if they ever, 
if you ever get to where it's not coming out right, you can just squeeze, squeeze the trigger and hold it up against your hand, and that'll burp the system, and that's going to get the, uh, the media flowing again. So, what else we can see here? As you can see, they all have l large windows. Even the small one has a very large window to make it easy to see. I'll latch up. Some other features here. Oh, the exhaust port. I'll show you guys. So, all three have an exhaust port. I'll show you. Now, if you want to upgrade, I don't know, Joe, if you can see this. Here's a, here's a dust collector. So what happens is as you're blasting, there, you know, there's a lot of dust and debris coming off, and it's going to make it difficult to see. So um, if you have a big unit like this, this dust collector is really nice to, to remove all that, r remove all that dust and debris and keep you blasting. But if you don't, let me turn this one around here. They come with this exhaust port, which works with a standard vacuum hose. So it's just a one and a half inch vacuum hose. So what you would do is, this is just a shop vac I have on the other side of the bench. So it just shoves up in there. You turn on your shop vac, and then that's what's going to uh, uh, collect all the dust out of there. So let me put some of this back, get this turned around. I guess that's all the basic, basic features of yeah, I think I pretty much, pretty much went over everything. So now let's take a look at uh, some of the blast media that you would use. I'll let Joe get in here. Or maybe we should go over, let's go over, let's actually, let's go over why you'd want to blast first. How about that? And then we'll, then we'll get into blast media. So why do you want to blast? Joe, maybe you can get down here and take a look at some of these parts. Now one reason you want to blast is because there's going to be a lot of parts that you can't really get into with a sanding disc or a stripping disc, like, like a spring here trying to get into all these areas. A blast gun, you can just keep blasting and get around it. This latch mechanism here, like there's really very little way that you're going to be able to get in and get around all these little spaces, but a blaster will. Even this header, Joe, am I screwing up moving too fast for you here? I, I don't mean to scot it on you, on you here, but I think I am. So anyways, so I'll hold this here a little longer. So you can see like this blast, mechanism. I thought Joe was a little quicker, but so anyways, I'm moving pretty fast here. Is this good, Joe? So as you can see, how are you ever going to get into that? Do I need to show the spring again? All right. Or can we get over here? Like even in here, you're never going to get in there, but with a blaster and then down around all these tubes, can you see that? Like a blaster is the only way you're going to get into any of those areas. And plus, if the area, if the rust is pitted, when you sand over it, you're just going to glaze right over those pits, and the rust is going to stay in the pits. And if the rust stays, and if the rust stays in the pits, uh, what that means is it's eventually going to push back up through your body work or your paint and blister. So you got to make sure. So blasting is really the only way to actually get the rust out of those pits. And we actually have some footage of these blast cabinets in use. I think we can cut to that right now. And you're going to see us blasting these parts, the header, the latch, you know, the spring. And you can see how this high quality gun with we're using soda is just you're just tearing right through all the rust all the paint and that's going to give you a good surface for when you go to paint paint all your parts on uh, your on your restoration so now that you've seen blasting now we'll take a look at at the uh, blast media I'll let Joe get over here I'll give him I'll give him a couple minutes to get focused here all right so generally you're going to use glass beads 100 to 120 grit and aluminum oxide in a blast cabinet those are the two. We have glass beads in one cabinet, and another cabinet we have aluminum oxide. So, uh, Scott, t typically, what like blast media and a blast cabinet? What, like, what grit do you want to stay under? Generally speaking, with the blast cabinets, you want to stay uh, 60 grit or finer. Um, for any of you who are not really familiar with the blast media, it runs a lot like sandpaper. So, the smaller the number, the more yeah. aggressive it becomes. Uh, the higher the number, the less aggressive the you know finer yeah. cleaning action is going to have. And so, and, and maybe you ask why not soda? So soda is because it, it pulverizes and you can't reuse it. And one benefit of a blast cabinet is that it stays in here and it gets recycled and saves you money. You're not just blasting it away. So, but we'll get to soda in a minute because we have pressure blasters that you may want to use soda in. So another option is silicon carbide, which is a little more aggressive, even though it's 60 grit, and that's really good with rust. So that's another option. And we also have gra uh, ground glass, which is good if you have our small job blast system, which we'll show you here in a minute. 
And we also have walnut shells and soda and all the, all the abrasive media types you want for your job is uh, available at Eastwood. So now that we've checked out all this, let's check out some pressure blasters. So maybe you're not in the, in the, uh, uh, the market right now for a blast cabinet. Maybe you're looking at a pressure blaster. So we have you know, the single standard uh, pressure blasters here. We have 50, 100, 200 pound versions. But let's check out this one right here, the, the Eastwood uh, dual, dual blaster. What's really cool about this one is that you can put soda in one and you can put an abrasive media in this other tank. And this nozzle here is going to let you mix them together by simply turning. So you can mix half and half, 25, 70, however, whatever you can create your own blend, or you can go all one and have the other one off, which is nice. Say you're blasting around a car, maybe you've got areas that have paint, you've got areas that that are rust. Maybe you have urethane bumpers, you're blasting near glass or chrome. And so if you're in some delicate areas, you want to switch over to soda, which isn't as abrasive, and it's going to be safe around glass. It's going to remove stuff from the urethane bumpers and not eat away at it. Whereas you can just switch when you get to an area that's just uh, the, the sheet metal, where you're trying to strip rust, or an area where you got rust, or where you have rust, you can just switch over to your abrasive media. And at that point, um, you can just keep going. You don't got to jump around the car and try to figure out what you're doing. You can just go, I'm in an area for soda, switch the valve over, and now you can just keep, keep moving along. So, and our last one, say you're thinking about getting into blasting, you know, you're not sure if this is for you. We have this small job system. It actually uses the same nozzle. Uh, we've upgraded, we've put the same, uh, the same gun that we use in our blast cabinets on this small job system. We've improved this tube, which is really gonna help you. So, so, so it's an improved system. We get some extra consumables. And all you do is you get your media. And this is one where sometimes you're going to want to use ground glass. You simply stick the tube down in here, connect the airline right here, pull the trigger, and you're blasting. So there's not a whole lot of uh, commitment or investment here. And it's, it's going to blast. It's not going to remove like a pressure blaster because you don't have that force behind it. But it is nice to have if you're thinking about starting. Or even if you have a pressure blaster or a blast cabinet, if you have a, you know, maybe you don't feel like breaking out a pressure blaster, or maybe you have a blast cabinet, but you've got a part too big. Maybe it's part of your frame, fenders, you know, quarter panels, areas where, like I said earlier, you've got that pitted rust and you want to remove it. Now, which you can do chemically, and those options are available at Eastwood as well. But if you have, the, if you have one of these small job systems, you just quick hook it up to your compressor, put the tube in, and you go out to your car, your frame, whatever, that's obviously too big to fit in a blast cabinet, and you just blast that stuff away. So even if you have all this, this is still a really nice option, this um, small job blast system. So, Scott, were you able to answer questions? Yep, doing the questions really well. One thing to add uh, about the blast guns in all these cabinets is that every part that's really going to wear out is completely replaceable. Uh, we have all the nozzles you can change out, and then there's even an inner pilot jet you can't see. It's going to be a consumable item. Uh, occasionally you'll see it's not picking up media like it should. It's a simple investigation. All you do is pop off the nozzle. You can unscrew it and check it out. Uh, again, it's yeah. completely replaceable, so you're up and blasting, and you're not having to buy whole new guns. Yeah, and the, the key is that all the consumables are available at Eastwood. So when you buy this, we don't forget about you. You know, if something happens, we're going to take care of you. You know, so, and you always, you know, lifetime satisfaction guarantee. So we have all that right here at Eastwood. And then I guess, is that it, Scott? Yep. Okay, well, um, thanks for joining us. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We're trying to, you know, we're doing a few of these a week. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.